Our next guest is Dan Kara. Dan is Practice Director for Robotics at ABI Research, a technology market intelligence company. Prior to ABI, Dan was Chief Research Officer for Myria, a research and advisory services firm focused on automation, robotics, and intelligent systems trends, and publisher of the Arisplex Robotics Portal. Welcome, Dan. Thank you very much, Marty. I'm here today to speak about the intersection of the Internet of Things and robotics. These are both highly synergistic technologies or architectures or however you want to describe them. And actually, the robotics will benefit IoT and IoT will benefit robotics. Now, the Internet of Things and robotics, that the, the concept of that goes back much, much further than 1999 when the Internet of Things was first, first coined, um, coming out of the Auto ID Center at MIT through through Craig Ashton. And in fact, the, the, the diagram you can see up here in the first slide, on the right-hand side, you'll see, looks like a comic book drawing, and on the left-hand side, a number of classic consumer robotics products. On the right-hand side, that picture actually comes from a short story called There Will Come uh, a Soft Range, written by Ray Bradbury back in the 50s, and he envisioned at that time a smart home with number of highly connected uh, robotic devices that could, con that could communicate with each other and then communicate with some sort of central, in, in a word that they weren't using at that time, server, and in fact run basically autonomously. It's also useful for this particular uh, short story that it, that it focuses on robots that, were s that performed a single purpose or worked in groups of single purpose robots to accomplish something a little bit larger, which is exactly we are, where we are at this particular time. So multitasking robots or multi-application robots aren't a real thing. So it gives you some sort of history. And I'd like to talk a little bit about, these are the four things we're going to be covering today. And you see down at the bottom of the slide, there is a, there is a quote by uh, B.K. Soon, the CEO of Samsung, or one of the three CEOs of Samsung. And he was saying at the, the opening keynote today, uh, this week at CES, that in five years, every one of Samsung's products are going to be able to be connect to the Internet. And, and, and be controlled by it some way. And here's an example of one of those products, which is in fact a robotic vacuum cleaner that that particular company makes. So I would assume if they're making this product, this is going to be one of the products that's connected to the pipe that is the internet. Now before we start talking about the intersection between uh, uh, IoT and robotics, let's look and, and, and describe what we're actually talking about here. Robotics is actually a continuum. Um, it moves from uh, pure automation, which basically has devices sensing and acting, to robotics, which can actually sense their environment, think about that based on sensor input, and then act in the physical world. So it's very, very different than the virtual world of the Internet. Over the last couple of years, say the last eight years, there's been a number of technologies developed in the mobile communications field that have been direct, that have directly supported the robotics uh, industry and sector. Uh, many of those things have to do with accelerometers or, or low-cast cameras, and some of the technologies from robotics has actually helped out the mobile communications industry, stuff like uh, facial recognition software, natural language processing. So the, again, these are highly synergistic and they're, and they're supporting each other, much in the way that this diagram describes. Now, if you look at the Internet of Thring Things as a diagrammatic, as we see here in this particular slide, you can see that there's three different classes of edge devices, those things that will be interacting with people. Very thin devices, there's intelligent devices where there's some level of processing on, the, on that particular device, and then what I call actuated devices. So not only can they do sensing and processing and communication, but they can also actuate in the physical world. And, and as we will see in the next slide, that's what makes robotics a little bit different. So when you look at these three different types of edge devices, uh, again, thin devices that have very limited capabilities and the more intelligent devices with some level of processing, and then finally these actuated devices. If you look at this, we take this down to the next slide, and you can see actuation of, is of two types. Most of the emphasis for the IoT that we're seeing now at CES and elsewhere really focuses on static actuation. You can do things like turn on an air conditioner, for example, as opposed to dynamic actuation, where actually you're moving through the world or manipulating objects or actually moving from place to place through that world. So movement, manipulation, and moving through. We're also adding autonomy and intelligence. These are capabilities that have been with robotics technology since its inception, including uh, processing off host servers, and again, the typical things, autonomy, mobility, manipulation, and such. So how does robotics and IoT 
intersect with respect to sensing? Well, most of the emphasis now in IoT is on, on, on passive sensors. Uh, they don't require a whole lot of power, although they can have some battery, battery systems passives. But the robotic systems, they typically focus on active sensors because they're powered entities. They're, they're, in most cases, they either have batteries or they're plugged into the wall somehow. So what we see is the impact of IoT on, on robotics. As the sensors proliferate throughout their particular environment, robotic systems can make use of those capabilities. And we'll show this in a diagram a, a, diagram a little bit later. At the same time, that the, 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 internet, the environment itself that's highly sensitive with IoT can use the ro robots themselves as a type of gateway for some type of pre-processing before it's sent up to the web. Same thing with manipulation. It's manipulation which really differentiates robotics from the typical sort of dead device, even if it's connected or not. In order to manipulate things, though, you have to be able to uh, uh, recognize those objects and grasp those objects and manipulate those objects. IoT technologies can help in this case particularly as well. So for example, if the edge devices are self-describing, they let you know what they are. And there's a, a, piles of research going on in this area, so to let a, a particular device know that it's a glass, or a door, or a room, or a location. Robots can use those things to make uh, movement or object description much, much easier because it's computationally complex, and actually, it, you know, it can be difficult to do if you're using visual systems or some other types of technologies. Uh, Cloud-based services can also be a repository for certain types of object models, like how to open a door, or how to go upstairs, or open a certain class of door. In terms of, of mo mo mobility and navigation, again, IoT technologies can support the robotics needs of moving of mobility and navigation, particularly in terms of localization and path planning. Where am I in the world, and how do I move from place to place? So you can simplify this by using censored objects as sort of cues for the robotic system as they move through their environments. Now robots are pretty good at navigating through indoor spaces and outdoor spaces. So in fact, the IoT technologies will simply augment a great deal of work that's already gone in the past. But we're reaching a, a particular time where you can use these different types for lack of a better word, I'll call them transponders, but we can, there's a variety of number of types to use these beacons or transponders to move through the physical world, and robots can use those, particularly as the world becomes much more highly censored, as we've seen at CES over the last couple of days in the home and in other places. So let's take a look at this in a diagrammatic form supporting object recognition. There's research going on right now, as well as the, the very beginnings of commercial uh, uh, initiatives, where objects describe what they are to a particular robot. Then the robot can use that information instead of having to determine what it is, either based on its own knowledge of objects when it gets information from the web, or trying to determine what it is by touch or by some other mechanism, that the object itself can tell the robot what it is. And that speeds up a very difficult process of object recognition, and then the first step for manipulation. The same thing with increasing intelligence. If these objects are in fact telling them where they, what they are or where they are, then in fact the robot can use that information. So for example, here in this particular example, the room is saying I'm in room 301. The robot's looking at a door and notices a particular type of lever door. The robot goes out to the web, there's repositories of object models on the web and it can download those saying, okay, I know I'm at a door, what type of handle is it? This is that particular type of handle. It uploads the information that it needs on opening that type of handle. If it's something new, then the robot will, will take that information, learn from it, pass it up to the cloud again, and that becomes knowledge. So that the next robot that's doing it somewhere else can use that information to open up that type of door. The same thing happens to extending the IoT the robots as act as a type of uber sensor. Robots have always been highly censored, and the sensors are typically powered and very, very powerful for the most part, depending on the type of robot. So actually the IoT can use the robotic capabilities as a sensor as an advanced type of sensing system. So with this particular example, we have the robot using visual sensors, tactile sensors, a variety of other things. It's able to move from place to place gathering more information. And then of course, since the processing is located on the robot, it can perform sensor fusion, something that's difficult to do on low cost, cheap sensors because the power consumptions and a variety of other things. So the robot can act as a type of sensor gateway and as a type of very, very powerful sensor for the wider internet of things. 
For a person to come into a room to interact with a room is a little bit difficult. For example, interacting with your toaster, or interacting with a table, or interacting with a light. But using a robot as a type of avatar to control other types of devices makes a lot of sense. And people are beginning to explore this area now with commercial class systems. They can also act as a, as a, as a gateway. So they can su support a variety of different types of sensors types. They can, again, perform data sensor fusion and data processing on the robot before it's sent up to a cloud, or maybe not even sent to the cloud as a return back to the sensors. And again, these are social devices. There's plenty of research out there showing that something in a humanoid form factor or something much, much simpler than that is a better way to interact with a, with a physical device than just having just a plain physical device. And then also we can support manipulation and mobile manipulation. And here's another diagrammatic representation up there. The robot can understand natural language processing. That processing can be on the robot itself or it can go to the cloud. Devices around it, such as a bed, or in, in this case I'm using um, the example of crutches, they can, they can assist the robot in locating these things. So if the person says, I wish to stand up, the robot under, understands that in particular type of information. It knows what it has to do based on information it's, it has internally or in the cloud, maybe picked up from other classes of robots. It can find and locate those crutches because they are sensor devices, and it can find them much, much easier with a, a whole lot of processing, and then using its mobility and manipulation, bring those crutches to the person in bed. And with that, I'd like to thank you. I know that's fairly quickly, but again, robots can act as both a facilitator for IoT and then IoT act as a facilitator for robotics technologies. There's a, a great deal of synergies there, and it goes back over a long period of time. People have been thinking about this for a great deal of time, and now products are just becoming commercialized that support this type of vision. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.